There were many requests about using my CNC version 2.0 with bipolar stepper motors which is why I have done that conversion. The working principle and the build process of the mechanics was treated in the previous video showing the machine with geared DC motors. The bipolar stepper motors I had in stock are 5 volts types. The phase current at 5 volts is around 1.4 amps. To get the maximum speed with those motors, they are usually driven with constant current instead of constant voltage. I am using boards with A4988 chips, which are cheap and can switch currents of up to 2 amps at up to 35 volts. In order to connect the stepper motor to the driver board, you need to know which pair of cables belongs to each phase. Switch your multimeter to continuity measurement to find those pairs. At this type, the red and the blue colored pairs are internally connected to a phase. Phase 1 is connected to pin 1A and 1B, phase 2 runs to pin 2A and 2B. It doesn't matter what phase is connected with what pair of output terminals. Ground is connected to ground of the Arduino and also joined with ground of the voltage source of the motors. The voltage supply for the logic levels, sometimes marked with VDD has to be connected to plus 5 volts of the Arduino. The supply voltage of the stepper motors must be in the range between 12 and 35 volts. I am using the 12V line of an old computer power supply. Not reset must be on high level to activate the chip, which is done by an external 2.2kOhms pull up resistor. Furthermore, not enable must be on low level. The board has an internal pull down resistor, thus that pin is on low level by default. Nonetheless, this pin is connected to a pin of the Arduino so that the motors can be disabled by software. Not sleep must be on high level to activate the chip, which is the default value caused by the internal pull up resistor on the board. Direction and step are connected to the microcontroller. MS1 to MS3 are used to adjust microstepping and all of those terminals have an internal pull down resistor, thus they are on low level by default which means the motors are driven in full step mode. I am driving the motors with half steps, thus MS1 must be on high level. The phase current is adjusted by a tiny potentiometer. Dial the maximum current range of your multimeter, which is 10 amps at this type and switch it in series to a phase. I have adjusted all boards to 700mA which generates a torque that is sufficient to move all axes with ease. Furthermore, that current is far from the limit values of the stepper motors as well as the driver boards giving you a high reliability of the system. With each 5V pulse at the step pin, the motor moves a single step. Considering that I have adjusted the boards to half stepping, the motor turns a half step with each pulse. The step is triggered whenever the signal goes from 0 to 5V, thus at the rising edge of the input voltage. The direction pin rules the direction of movement. If that pin is on low level, the motor spins clockwise with each pulse at the step pin... ...while the movement is counterclockwise if a high signal is applied to the direction pin. When swapping the cables of one phase, the rotational direction is counterclockwise at low signal... ...and clockwise at high signal. With that in mind, you can swap the rotational movement of a stepper motor by simply swapping the cables of one phase. I have mounted the driver boards besides the stepper motors using the cabling of the old motors and sensors. 
Same as before the conversion, the maximum speed is around 3mm per second, it's still a very slow machine. Instead of 32 full steps, one revolution now equals 200 half steps. Only in theory one half step equals a linear movement of 0.005mm. Let's plot the test pattern using a ball pen. The plotting speed is noticeably higher than before, because the bipolar steppers can process a sequence of single steps faster than the geared DC motors. The linkage between 5mm motor shaft and 6mm threaded rod is composed of three 6mm nuts that are soldered. With a 1.5mm drill hole and the slotted motor shaft, a piece of 1mm wire can be used to connect the adapter with the motor reliably. You can align the adapter upright with a drill press when gluing the screws with the motor shaft. After connecting the threaded rod with the motor shaft, nut number 4 is used to lock the linkage. As you can see, those low tech adapter isn't perfectly centered. The rod as well as the motor wobbles noticeably. If you can do it better or if you spend some more money for a quality part, you will get a higher precision. Once more, I wanted to use simple tools and easy to get materials for the upgrade of my CNC machine. The mount of the stepper motor is made of thin metal sheets to avoid the construction from jamming. The other end of the rod is supported by ball bearings and more solid metal angles. I have added a lubrication system which isn't my invention. You can see similar systems at old steam engines. A piece of press tube is used as oil reservoir and a 1mm drill hole forwards the oil to the threaded rod. Use oil with a high viscosity and fill in just a few drops or else it will start dripping. I have drilled out the 6mm threads inside the 10mm bolts. After that I have inserted a piece of a 6mm threaded bar and used two nuts to tighten the thread slightly so that you can still turn the rod easily by hand. The nuts are fixed on the bolt using hot glue. Epoxy is stronger, but you can make corrections more easily with hot glue if the thread is jamming or if there is still too much backlash. The test pattern is plotted approximately twice as fast and caused by the lower backlash of the mechanics, the precision is also better than with the old version of the CNC. The main intention of the CNC is using low tech tools and simple materials to create it and even with the wobbly threaded bars, the accuracy is in the range of tenth of a millimeter. Metalwork wasn't part of the specification for this machine. Once again I'm cutting 0.8mm aluminum, which brings the bending stiffness of the mechanics to its limits. Same as before, the router is mounted on an aluminum angle using a metal ring, but now there is an additional fastening point at the bottom of the motor. That's where commercially available brackets normally link the router with the mechanics, once more, I am using the low tech version. The result is better than before. The cutting edges are smoother... And the accuracy of the 40mm hole isn't too bad.
you can engrave glass faster than ever after the transformation to version 2.1. A splash guard made of some packing materials prevents the water and dish liquid from being spread all over the machine. The flexible mount of the router motor is now composed of perforated metal stripes. With that structure, the roughness of the glass plate is compensated. The result is very good, isn't it? I am using this machine mostly for cutting plastics. That's a great material for many applications. Here I am processing acrylic plastic. The material is engraved and cut. With each pass the 10 degrees V bit is diving deeper into the plastics until the plate is cut along the outlines. Some styrofoam underneath the acrylic plastics prevents the base plate of the CNC from being cut as well. The graphic is engraved with high accuracy and you can barely see an offset at the cross points of the lines. The cutting line is straight wherever it should be. The edges of the cutting lines aren't ideally smooth, which is caused by the used V-bit and the backlash of the mechanics. You can process plywood with ease. The work area of this machine is 50 times 50 centimeters. The 4mm poplar is cut easily with my 100W router motor. The template is cut mirror inverted because the cutting edges of wood are usually smoother at the bottom side when using normal router bits. Nonetheless, the edges have to be smoothened with some sandpaper afterwards. With all parts glued, we get a bird that you are allowed to copy for free, same as the operating system that Penguin represents. Same as with version 2.0, I am using my own command line software to control the machine and process scalable vector graphics with all paths converted to polygons. After upgrading to version 2.1, you can load the GRPL software on the Arduino, enabling the CNC to process G-code. Many programs can convert CAD files to G-code. After the conversion you need another program that can forward the G-code files to the Arduino. Here I am using the Universal G-code Sender, which is open source software based on Java. You must use terminal commands to set some machine parameters like steps per millimeter and motor speed that are stored in the GRPL software on the Arduino. You can follow the movement of the router on the computer screen. With that software combination you can set the height of the router. The paths needed to mill areas are calculated by the CAD software and exported as G-code. The result isn't bad, but mirror inverted. I swept the cables running to one phase of the Y motor and did a second attempt to cut the logo. Now the result meets the settings given by the software. The edges are surprisingly smooth, I like it. As with all my machines, you can find the build instructions and the software on my project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!